Hi there. Have you ever run into the problem where you try to make a large grid ship with some details and it turns out to be absolutely massive? I'm gonna show you a few ways you can add small grid details around your large blocks. The solution is hybrid grids. I'd just like to point out I'm no way the first one to come up with this idea. I just haven't seen a tutorial like this on YouTube before, so I decided I'd make one. First I'm gonna show you a few ways you can attach small grids to large grids. You can do this with both rotors and hinges, but I prefer rotors. This is probably the easiest way to do the setup, although it requires quite a lot of resources. You have a large grid here with an advanced rotor bar. Then on the top you have a piston that's slightly extended and a large grid rotor with the head swapped. So now you can retract the piston and attach the rotor. like so. Here you have another version that's much cheaper. On the right you have the large grid with an advanced rotor part. On top of it you have a small grid landing gear with a piston extended and attached to the piston you have a conveyor junction and a small grid rotor. Now you can just retract the piston and attach the rotor. Once you disconnect you have the rotor set up. You could also use a large grid rotor which is much easier to set up and gives you more torque, but it takes up much more space. Once you've completed the rotor switch, you can start adding detail around your large blocks. Gaps around the large blocks can be quite small. Many of the large grid parts have unique hitboxes, so you can go quite near to them with the small grid. With the new hitbox update, you can add blocks that almost touch the larger grid. One way to avoid clang is to keep your camera still when placing the blocks. If you see any movement, remove that block and try some other block or move it farther away. If your grids start shaking when placing blocks, that's a good indication you probably have some collision issues. Doing hybrid grids has many advantages. The main one being you can add way more detail to your crafts than you could with only large grid. If your cockpit or seat is connected to the small grid, you will control wheels and thrusters connected to the small grid. And vice versa, if your cockpit or seat is connected to the large grid, you will control wheels and thrusters connected to the large grid. One disadvantage is that the large grid counts as a subgrid, but it mostly affects flying vehicles in gravity environments, as they tend to have a slow drift downwards. There are no ways to connect to that small rotor except on the back side. Make sure this block is the one you want, or you will have trouble switching it out. You can take your starting base with you, This means you can also build much smaller moving bases if you only use large grid for the production blocks. Here is an example of a rover I made using this technique. As you can see, it's a small grid rover, but it has a large grid turret on top, as well as large grid production blocks inside it. I usually use a small grid landing gear to lock the large grid core in its place.
Here is another example of a craft I've built using this technique. As you can see, it has an ore refinery, an assembler, a large refinery, a medical room. It also has both a small grid cockpit and a control seat attached to the large grid. Here is an example of a hybrid grid that is centered around the refinery, meaning it has two large blocks in the middle. As long as your small grid also has a two block middle, you can make it symmetric. The ship also has a medical room and some other large grid parts, such as an antenna. Can you tell this is actual ship inspired? Also has some satisfying solar panel packing. Here is an example of a much more detailed graph with a large grid core. As you can see, I have a large grid ore detector and some large grid production blocks. They are surrounded by an almost finished spaceship. In this cross section, you can clearly see how the small grid surrounds the large grid. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video please click the like button and check out my channel for more weird content.